In this video, we will be configuring an Ethernet IP to BACnet IP quick server to send and receive analog and digital data between two BACnet chillers and one Rockwell PLC. The quick server gateway will be configured as a client to the PLC and to the chillers. The tools required in this video will be Microsoft Excel, Field Server Toolbox. If you do not have or do not want to use Microsoft Excel, you can use any notepad program. You can find the toolbox under user manuals on our website. When you receive your module, it will have the default IP address of 192.168.2.101. To change this address, you need to have your computer on the same subnet or in the range of 192.168.2. Once your computer is on that IP address range, we can launch the field server toolbox. Now click on Discover. Once open, we will see our module, the module's IP address, the MAC address, and the connectivity. This is color-coded to tell us whether or not we are connected and if we can use this utility to configure the module. Green means we can configure, blue means we could see the module but have limited configuration capability. Next step, we will open up the web page of this module by clicking on Connect. Here is where we'll change the IP address of the module. Click on Setup, then click Network Settings. Change the IP address, and if necessary, the network mask. Once your IP address is changed, click Update IP Settings, then click System Restart to reboot the Quick Server module. If you do not know your IP address, consult your network administrator. Now to configure the module, we need to download and edit the existing client CSV file. This can be downloaded from our website on the Quick Server product page. The first part of the CSV file is the common information section. The system station address or station ID is the BACnet IP device instance number or slave address. Make sure you select a number that is not being used on your BACnet network. Now we need to define the data array inside the Quick Server's memory. This is where all the data will be stored to access between the two networks. The data array name will be data and the length will be 100. We will store all data as floats because in the gateway a float uses one point of memory and a bool will use 32 points per one bool on the Ethernet IP side. I could delete the next line as I only need one array. Now we will configure the Ethernet IP client. I am going to be communicating to one PLC, so I will name it PLC. The IP address of that PLC is 10.1.2.35. Now to the map descriptors, or commands, to that PLC. First is the name of that command. This name is for your reference only. Make it something obvious in case you need to troubleshoot the gateway later. For mine, it will be data to chillers. The data array name will be the name of the data array we created earlier, data. The data array offset is the point or register to start at inside that data array. We can start at zero for this example. Next, the node name. We only defined one node on the Ethernet IP network, and that was PLC, so we'll enter PLC here. The function is going to be RDBC for a data table read. EIP tag name. This is the exact name in the Ethernet IP device. For us, it is data to chillers square bracket zero. The length is how many consecutive registers we will be transferring. I will be transferring 10 for this command. Now we have data going to the quick server gateway for the chillers, but we need to get data back from the chillers, so I will create a second command. The name is data from chillers. Data array is data. The offset we will be using is 50. I am using 50 because it is an easy number to work with, and it splits the data array in half. The function is going to be wrbc for a data table write. The EIP tag name in the PLC is going to be data from chillers square bracket zero. And the length again will be 20. Now I need to get some binary or discrete data between the chillers and the PLC. 
So I will copy the two previous commands we have already modified and paste them below. We need to get a start bit from the PLC to the first chiller. The name of the command will be chiller1 start. The data array offset will be 20. For simplicity's sake, I will just use a real array inside the PLC. One bit on the chiller will equal one float inside the PLC. The next command will give the PLC status of the chiller. The offset and the EIP tag name will need to be changed for this. This same data needs to be set up for the second chiller. So we can copy these commands and paste them below, changing the name, the offset, and the destination. With that, the PLC commands are complete. Now, for the BACnet side, we need to define two chillers and their node addresses. The first node will be chiller1, and its address is 4. You will get the addresses from the BACnet devices themselves. Copy this line and paste it to create a second node. This one will be chiller2, and its address is 5. With that completed, we can build some commands for these nodes. The first command will be reading five analog inputs from the first chiller. Name will be chiller1ai. The data array will be the one we created earlier, data. The offset is 50. This will go to the internal database at 50 where I am sending the data to the PLC. The function is rdbc for read analog. The node is chiller1. The data type is ai. And the length is 5, meaning we will be reading ai1, ai2, ai3, ai4, and ai5. The second command is chiller1ao. The offset is going to be 0 to line up with the data going from the PLC. The function is wrbc. Node is chiller1 and type is ao. Object is 1. This number would increase if you had more than one of the same type of commands going to the same node. The length is 5. Now we need to have those same commands for the second chiller, so we can copy and paste those commands. Because we want the same data, we just need to change the name, the offset, and the node name. Now we need to map in the start and status bits for our chillers. The next command is chiller1status. Same data array. The offset is 70 to match up with the PLC commands. The function will be rdbc. The data type will be bi binary in. The length is 1. Next command, chiller1 start. Data array will be data. Offset will be 20 and the node is chiller1. The data type is BO, and the length is 1. To map in the same bits for the second chiller, we need to copy both commands and paste them. Just change the name, offset, and node name. With that done, we have completed the configuration of the CSV file. I will save the template as another name so we can keep the original and I'll save it to the desktop so I can easily find it later. Now it is time to download to the module. Open up the web page again and choose Setup, then choose File Transfer. To do this, you might have to change your computer's IP address if you cannot connect to your module. On the Configuration tab, choose File. Browse to the CSV we just created. Select, then click Submit. Once this is uploaded to your module, click System Restart. The module needs to reset in order for the configuration changes to take place. And with that, the configuration is done.
Now that the module is downloaded to, we can monitor any errors by using the web page by clicking on User Messages. If there are any errors in your configuration file, you will see them here with the line number next to the error. If you have no errors in the configuration file, we can move on to checking your network for any errors by clicking on View, then Connections. Here you will see the two connections and the number of packets transmitted, received, and airing. If you are seeing errors, you can look at the map descriptors by clicking on Map Descriptors. Find the one that has the errors, double click on that map descriptor. Once you are looking at that map descriptor, click on the Error Status tab. You will then see the error that you are receiving. If you want to look at the internal memory to see your data, click on Data Arrays. These arrays can be edited for testing purposes by double clicking on the data point and click Enable Data Editing. Then you can change the value. If your module is not working and you cannot figure out why, you can always log the data and email it to our technical support group. In your field server toolbox, click on the EKG or heartbeat icon on the far right. This will open up the device diagnostics. Change the diagnostic test to full diagnostics and set a capture period to 5 minutes and start the diagnostic capture. Once completed, it will create a zipped file that you can email to our technical support engineers. The email address is support at prosoft-technology.com. If you want any more information on this product or any of our other products, please visit us on our website at www.prosoft-technology.com. And as always, happy training.